I'm glad you found this video because there is a lot of misinformation floating around on YouTube about how to get this done the right way. Fortunately, this process has become easier than ever and the gameplay emulation is just fantastic. By the end of this video, you'll have everything it takes to play your favorite PlayStation 1 games on your own Nintendo 3DS or 2DS system. And we're starting now. In order for this to work, you'll need for your 2DS or 3DS system to be jailbroken. If you need to learn how to do this, I have a link for you in the description below. And you'll need to use either a new Nintendo 3DS or a new Nintendo 2DS to maximize emulation performance. To make this process as easy as possible, there's an all-in-one file linked for you in the description below, hosted on the mega.nz website. All you have to do is click on the link, hover over the download button, and select standard download from the list of choices. With the zip file downloaded, right-click on it and extract the contents to your downloads folder. Once you have it uncompressed, you can delete the zip file to eliminate clutter out of your downloads folder. Go into the newly uncompressed folder by double-clicking on it. Insert the SD or micro SD card from your 2DS or 3DS system into your computer. Make sure you scroll down to a section that does not have a folder highlighted, then drag everything from the folder in your downloads folder and drop it right onto the root of the SD or micro SD card. Once you have all of this copied over, navigate to the RetroArch folder you just copied by double clicking into it. Inside the RetroArch folder, there's a pre-created folder here called Downloads. Find that folder and double click into it. I found this folder to be the best place to store your PlayStation 1 games, and I'll show you why in just a moment when we go into RetroArch. Locate your game files on your PC. In this case, I have a folder called ROMs on C that I keep game files on. Your PS1 games should be in either BenQ format or in CHD format. In this case, I have these games split up into subfolders, and they're stored as BenQ format games. All you have to do at this point is just copy your content over to the Downloads folder on your SD or micro SD card. I've kept them in a PS1 folder in the games and subfolder so that when I add additional content later, things will be easy to understand. Now you can close any instances of File Explorer in Windows, remove your SD or micro SD card, and put it back into your 2DS or 3DS system. On your 2DS or 3DS system, you'll need to use the FBI app in order to install those CIA files that you copied over, one being RetroArch and the other being DSP1. Launch the FBI app from the home screen by selecting it with the A button. In the bottom screen, select SD with the A button. From here, you can use the D-pad to scroll down until you get to DSP1.CIA. Select this with the A button. This empowers your 2DS or 3DS system to be able to run audio on homebrew applications. Scroll down to install and delete CIA and then select it with the A button. And at this confirmation screen, select A to continue to install DSP1. Once it's installed, you'll get a confirmation screen. Press the A button to continue to go back to FBI. From here, use the D-pad to scroll down until you see RetroArch3DS.CIA. Select it with the A button to continue. Just like before, scroll down with the D-pad to install and delete CIA and select it with the A button. And at the confirmation prompt, press A to continue. This will install RetroArch to your system. Once RetroArch is finished installing, press the A button to continue to go back to FBI. From here, you're done with FBI. You can press the home button on your 2DS or 3DS system, and you'll be greeted with a new message informing you that you have two new presents on the home screen. I love presents, let's go unwrap them. The first one's gonna be RetroArch. Press the A button to unwrap the present and finalize the setup of RetroArch on your main menu. Then use the D-pad to scroll right to find DSP1. Press the A button to unwrap DSP1 and finalize its setup on your main menu. DSP1 is designed to run once and then be deleted, just like the CIA file. Select it with the A button and you'll be prompted to close FBI. Press the A button and you'll close FBI and launch DSP1. What you'll see next is a series of various screens come up and also a series of tones play. Once that's done, DSP1 has completed its task and you'll be able to use audio with homebrew applications like RetroArch. In the top screen, at the bottom of the text, you'll see a message to press the B button to delete the CIA file and go back to the main menu. Press B. Back at the main menu of your 2DS or 3DS system, use the D-pad to scroll over to RetroArch. Select it with the A button to launch it for the first time. Each time you launch RetroArch, you can expect to see a black screen for about 30 seconds. Once it's fully loaded, you'll see the RetroArch main menu in the top screen. To play your PS1 games, in the top display, use the D-pad to move the highlight arrow down to load content and select it with the A button. Remember how I mentioned earlier in the video that putting your files in the downloads folder was beneficial? This is why. 
As soon as you hit Load Content, Downloads is one of the pre-selected folders. All you've got to do is move the highlight down to Downloads and select it with the A button. And here's that PS1 folder that we copied over earlier. Convenient! Select PS1 with the A button and you'll see the list of games here. Select the game file for the game that you want to play with the A button. And from the list of core choices, scroll down to Sony PlayStation PCSX and select it with the A button to launch the game. This is pretty amazing stuff, but what about games that have more than one disc? Let me show you how to swap them virtually inside RetroArch. Games like Wing Commander 3 here have four discs and require disc swapping to complete the game. To do this, tap the bottom display on your 3DS or 2DS system. This opens up all new options in both the top and bottom display. From the top display, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to the setting called Disc Control and select it with the A button. Just like on a real PlayStation, you need to eject the disc that's in there before you put a new one in. Select Eject Disc with the A button to continue. Now you can insert the next disc by using the D-pad to scroll down to Load New Disc and select it with the A button. In this case, it's going to be Wing Commander 3 Heart of the Tiger Disc 2. Just use the D-pad to move the highlighter down to the disc that you want to load and select it with the A button to continue. You'll see an appended disc message in the bottom. Scroll up to Insert Disc and select it with the A button to continue and resume your gameplay. Just like on a real PS1, the virtual disc door is closed and you're back in business. And now that you've got all this figured out, why not check out this video, shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below. I look forward to seeing you over there.